Hey, Drew, I heard you like Android phones now, right? Well, I mean, not exclusively. I mean, there's some good options on the lower end if you're willing to... <laughs> well, I decided to be cool and broke like you are and get my own Android phone. Frankie, what the heck is that? Oh, it's some doggy phone or something. It's got all the specs. 22,000 milliamp hours and 108 megapixels. Oh my god, that's not really a case, is it? No, it isn't. But I'm not switching away from my Mac, okay? I don't want to try Intel again, but I want to try other phone models like you are, because you seem so happy all the time. Okay, Frank, okay, it's just, you might want to learn a few things about getting an Android phone to work well with your Mac. <laughs> Nothing to worry about, because this has already copied everything Apple came up with, with its own skin. Honestly, you should try Whoa, it. Give Frankie, it a shot. Frankie, be careful. <laughs> You're gonna break yeah. something with that thing. It's like a brick. Yes, I am, because uh, I've got some pixel tablets in my future that I might want to destroy. All right, all right, all right, let, let's, let, let's begin. So as I mentioned before, it's been a couple years since I've put my fingers on any kind of Android phone, and the options of getting an Android to work well with a Mac have definitely changed, at least since last time I remember trying to do it, so I thought because I've been trying out some more Android phones as of late, I should tell you some of the tips and tricks I've learned, because a lot of us out there may be willing to dabble outside of the Apple Walled Garden, but maybe not ready to go the full PC route, you know? It's relatively affordable to check out an Android phone these days, days, you know, and can find pretty cool pixels for $200 or less, but switching from a MacBook to a Surface Pro or an XPS laptop or a Razer or something, yeah, that's a lot bigger of a financial commitment. So the three things that I'll be covering today are things that I also really, really appreciate and enjoy about my iPhone and how it works with its Mac, and that comes down to AirDrop, text messaging, and continuity camera. I'm going to show you kind of free and simple but compromised alternatives to this for Android, but keep in mind, of course, it's not going to be as good as the native way of doing things. There's always going to be compromises because Android was designed by Google and the Macs are designed by Apple, so there's always going to be this kind of asymmetrical compatibility thing, unless it comes to charging, because most of them still all charge via Type-C, so that's pretty cool. One charger for your MacBook and your Android. Can't say that about the iPhone yet. Well, let's start with the AirDrop one, because I know that's the one that seems to impress the most of you. So, I looked up if there was an alternative to AirDrop for Android on the Mac, and I stumbled upon this third-party program that's totally free, and as far as I can tell, there's not even some, like, pro version of it to unlock. It's not like they're, like, paywalling part of the features, which is what we'll get into later, but again, this is not a verified developer. It's not on the Mac App Store. None of these apps are, by the way. So, you do have to take a little bit of risk, but you can download it on GitHub, and it lets you look at the source code and everything, so they're really not trying to hide anything from from you, but essentially it's a program called NearDrop, which replicates Google's version of Nearby Share and combines it with the functionality of AirDrop. Essentially, you just have to download this app on your Mac and it kind of stays up in your menu bar and it's going to ask for notification access. Normally, I deny this, but this is the type of program where you actually want to enable it because in order for the file to actually send to the Mac, you're going to get a pop-up in your notification center and it's going to ask, would you like to accept or decline this offer and you hit accept and then it works. AirDrop doesn't require that, I guess, because it knows you're on the same Apple ID, but AirDrop actually does something fairly similar if a different Apple ID is AirDropping something to you. That's when you have to manually hit accept and save to downloads typically. But once I got it installed, I have to admit it worked pretty dang flawlessly. I would make a video thumbnail on my phone and when I was ready to share it to the Mac, I would literally just click nearby share and my MacBook Pro would show up as as an option and as soon as I tapped it it would have that notification pop up and I could hit accept and boom wirelessly without dependence on the internet so it's not bottlenecked by your upload speed or anything I was able to share pictures and videos directly to my MacBook Pro which was pretty cool now there are absolutely still some compromises so it's not as good as full-on airdrop for one both devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network because airdrop I guess has its own proprietary way of identifying other devices as does nearby 
my share. So near drop, in my opinion, is going to be as close as you can get to getting these two ecosystems to work together. But yeah, that means if you're out in the woods somewhere and you don't have Wi-Fi, this feature isn't going to work. So it's just using the network to identify the device. But keep in mind, it's not relying on the internet to send the pictures or videos, which means you don't have to upload those photos or videos to a server somewhere and then download them on the Mac, which means the files do share pretty quickly, which is nice. And the other downside, of course, is that this is not bilateral. At least as far as I can tell, there's no way to turn your Mac into a nearby share compatible file transfer to the Android. So if there's pictures and videos on your Mac that you want to send to the phone, yeah, this isn't really going to work for that. This is going to require you to find some other service, I guess, which kind of complicates the experience further, or you're going to have to just upload it to Google Drive and download it on the phone or Dropbox or whatever you use. But I find the more common scenario for me definitely is I take pictures or videos with my phone out on the go, and if I want to edit them into a video or see them on a bigger screen, I'm sending them to the Mac. So it seems like it covers a lot of the airdrop experience, even if it's not all of it. And it doesn't cost anything. And there's no ads or upcharges, which is pretty great. So I recommend Neardrop so far. The next one is an option that is also free and there's no ads or anything, but it's straight from Google. And I don't know when they introduced this, but I definitely don't remember having it a few years ago when I tried Android, but it's just called Messages for the Web. So when you first set up an Android phone and you open your messages, which yes, this is using SMS texting or RCS if you're texting someone that has that on their carrier and their phone. Google will actually just back up your text messages to your Google account, which makes it very easy to access them on messages.google.com. You sign into your same Google account on there, which you can access on any old internet browser, which of course the Mac has. And it's pretty impressive to be honest how low latency it is. Like the second I would get a text on my Android, it would already be on the laptop on the browser. So I would just keep that tab open and I could send text messages from the web. It kind of emulates, I guess, a third party messaging app. If you use Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or Telegram, you know, you can access those messaging apps on the web. That's another good alternative. If you're missing out on iMessage, just use a third party service that you can access on the Mac and your Android. But even if you're just relying on SMS and phone numbers, which a lot of us are, there's still a way to replicate that just through the web now. And it's straight from Google. And it's pretty clean. In fact, they'll even put little pop-ups in there that say, hey, your battery is low. So there's ways that through your Mac, you can have a bit more knowledge of what's going on on your phone. And I find that incredibly helpful. That's one of my favorite things about iMessage is being able to text people while I'm working on my computer. I don't have to unlock my phone or go grab my phone just to text people. And having messages on the web made this a lot more seamless and possible, even if it's not as great as having a dedicated app, but you can't win everything. Lastly, was definitely a tricky one. I was trying out like three or four different apps for this, but continuity camera is definitely, I think, one of the coolest features of iOS 16. You know, you can just turn your iPhone wirelessly into a webcam for your Mac, but I knew there were third-party options doing this, so I was like, there's got to be an app on the Play Store that lets me connect my Android camera to my MacBook as a webcam, and yeah, there's a few apps that claim to do it, but I couldn't find that many that actually did it, so that brings us to the one I actually found that I could get to work but yes it's still buggy and unfortunately there's a free option that works decently but then there's a paid option to unlock more features no sponsorships in this video by the way so I can complain about them all I want but it's called fine cam so obviously it's a lot more complicated than Apple solution because Apple doesn't require you to download an app or anything but I will give some credit to fine cam it doesn't require you to make an account with them it doesn't require an email and password like many other third-party apps require like oh give us your bank information as we try to connect your phone to your computer. But these third-party apps, I have to imagine, have gotten a lot less popularity for iPhones and Macs ever since Continuity Camera came out. But that's why, in my opinion, there should be an increase in the demand or interest in getting Android phones to work with Mac because we don't have a first-party solution to this. But essentially, you have to download the Mac version of Fine Cam on your MacBook and then download the Fine Cam app on your Android. And you have to make sure you're both on the same Wi-Fi network. But yes, once you finally get the apps open and connected and working with each other, it does have fairly little latency. It's not like the best quality in the world, but considering it's wireless and it's sending a 720p video feed from your phone to your MacBook, I got to admit it works pretty well. And there's little options that let you make your Android camera available for all other platforms. So OBS now can access my Android camera and FaceTime can access it too. But of course the downside 
is because this is just the free version of fine cam they do put a watermark on the bottom but they want to charge you like 60 bucks one time to turn that off or you can do 30 dollars a year or whatever i ain't paying for all that that's just too much but there's funny little workarounds for it so in obs you can crop in a little bit and that kind of removes the watermark even if you're losing a bit of quality and they don't give you too many camera options unfortunately like you can use the front camera which i guess ios continuity camera doesn't let you do not sure why you would want to use the front camera but that's an option but they didn't let me access the ultra wide lens on my android which is a little bit weird but the app did give me the option to mirror the image if i want to and funny enough i could get my android phone to actually turn into a webcam for facetime but facetime naturally flips the image so the watermark that they put there is reversed so it may look a little unprofessional when you're calling people but yeah technically if you wanted to have a wireless little webcam for your mac and you have an android phone you can do it with fine cam and if you pay that 60 dollars one-time fee then you can access like 4k and you can remove the watermark or add your own logos they have their own little studio with some basic editing effects and stuff but out of all the apps i tried that's the one that worked the best or i should say worked at all but outside of that i will admit that you can build your own kind of ecosystem with android in the mac if you're willing to use a lot more google services so it was kind of helpful for me that i'm already so ingrained into the youtube ecosystem because i pay for youtube premium because i watch more youtube than anything and of course i benefit for that on my mac as well because i watch a lot of videos on my mac and youtube music i also utilize and you can play music off of your mac and that's through your google account and everything same thing i access gmail through the web browser on my mac but one little workaround i figured out because i was using the ios notes app a lot until i switched to android you don't have notes over there but i do use notes on my mac well you can use google's application keep notes which is pretty much the same thing as ios notes just a little bit more clunky ui but you can access those same notes that you jot down ideas for on the android phone and on the mac so because google is very much a services based company a lot of their stuff can just be pulled up on the web like google sheets youtube music google drive you can access all of that stuff on your mac and on your android phone if there's little obstacles in the way like that i tend to just try to switch over to the google version of it and i must admit even though it's not perfect and it's definitely not as seamless as having an iphone and a mac there definitely is a lot more functionality now than there was a couple years ago when trying to get the android to work with a mac of some kind which i thought was a pretty fun exercise and experiment but are there any other tips out there or ideas you guys have for how to get your android to play nice with your mac feel free to share them down in the comments below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos this is your alp sheep here and i'll see you all in the next one